character. It can be described in many ways, battling till the clock hits zero, or defending your home court against a conference rival. Steve splits it in, scores off the window. Plus, a total team effort turns into a victory and a huge exclamation point at the rack. This week, we will spend some time with our two coaches who have committed their careers and their lives to building character. And players like K.K. Sanders, whose understanding of the word character belies her age. Commitment, heart, and character all part of the Rutgers basketball story. Michael in his second season as Rutgers head coach. We got the chance to spend a lot of time with Coach Michael earlier today. He is, his enthusiasm is infectious. Well, it's, and it's uh, sincere enthusiasm, too. Boy, Jake, good day, good day. Dream Team's awesome today, Joe. Dream Team's awesome today. Like usual, though. Usual. He understands what it takes to, to bring this program back, and he's doing this step by step. I think you're seeing the size of, the, of their improvement. Coach Michael is a good guy. A lot of energy, uh, you know, funny. He's a good guy to be around. Uh, can't ask for more. Energetic. He can talk. He's a great motivator. Really energetic. Energetic. You know, he could tell he wants to win. And uh, I'm, I'm really going to really miss playing for this coaching staff, the whole coaching staff. You know, uh, it's not one, not one dull moment with them. We'll get the crowd into the game. There he is. This is where you got to you start to feel all your hard work come together. The execution's been there, defending very well. Of course, you're going to want to get this crowd up into this game. Well, I tell you what, I've had a lot of great coaches that you know I've been fortunate enough to play for. Um, Jim Calhoun, a Hall of Fame coach at UConn, was part of his first recruiting class there at Connecticut. Played for a terrific high school coach. Um, you know, and the assistant coaches, too, that were at UConn at the time have become all mentors of mine. Dave Latos, the head coach at DePaul. Glenn Miller, who was coach at Brown and at Penn, and they now continue to be mentors of mine. And then I got a chance to work for some great guys, too. Carl Hobbs, who's on my staff now, I was his assistant at George Washington University when he was the Atlantic 10 Coach of the Year. Chance to work with him and, uh, you know, learn under some great coaches, too. And, and I love to play. I was always one of those guys at Jim Rat. Uh, when the playing days ended, the, you know, the first thing I thought of was I have to be involved in basketball. I'm very fortunate that Coach Calhoun gave me my first coaching job at UConn, and you know, I was hooked from day one. And what you're seeing today is something that you can recruit to. You can certainly recruit to this. You've got new facilities coming. You've got a coach and a coaching staff who are investing in their team. Now Sanders to work around the screen from a But the effort is is what's going on behind the scenes in practice in terms of managing some of the personalities and his coaching staff. Good job. He's going to go right to the rim. Yeah, of course, Pipe is a good coach. He's a good coach, my friend, too. He said, I believe you, you can't do it, but you have to do it. But I, I like Chris Pipe because he pushed him a lot of things to do. Energetic, positive, and he knows what to tell me when I'm like, I need to pick up or I need to help lead the team sometimes so he knows what to really tell me. He knows how to talk to me sometimes. He's that kind of coach that everybody, everybody wants to play with. He lets you play your basketball. And I really like that. Coach Pico is probably the most intense dude I've ever met. Uh, you know, he treats every game differently, but uh, he always has the same mentality for every game and uh, he really wants to come in and, and just beat everyone. He's a, he's a real winner. I think that's why I, I really connect with him, because I love to win, too. Um, thank you, and thanks. I always appreciate the people that came out. Great crowd tonight, the students, the band. It was awesome, awesome environment. Oh, that's out wow. here. Baker for Sanders. I hope that the Rutgers fan base sees what's brewing here. And 
this category. I hope you understand what's coming. Steve Michaels done a fantastic job with this program, and when the environment is like this, this team's gonna win a lot of games. No, since Piper came in, the Piper era, the new era, you know, he's just like everybody's excited to come to the games now, and you know, I'm I'm excited to play him, and because I know we're gonna have a good crowd, it's gonna feed it, that's gonna feed us energy, and you know, um, it's just different, you know. I, I appreciate that difference. Yeah. This is a really good place for basketball when the crowd's into it and when the product is good. And right now, the product is good. I'm proud of you. Big shots, big free throws, big plays, big defensive stops. Hey, together, together. One, two, three. Together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Rutgers basketball story is brought to you by RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey's largest hospital system. Let's be healthy together. And Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. As the Rutgers basketball family settled back into the rack, they paused to honor senior Tyler Scaife, who scored her 2,000th career point at Purdue. But even in Tyler's own words, the individual achievement pales in comparison to the team's success. And this team was eager to work. Minnesota turnover. K.K. Sanders takes advantage. Rutgers strikes first. In midair with one hand, it's flicked in by Stasia Carey. And Rutgers with the early 8-0 advantage. Scaife on cue, knocks it down. 10-0 Rutgers, timeout Minnesota. A huge start for the Scarlet Knights. The Gophers received a very chilly welcome from Coach C. Vivian Stringer and her Scarlet Knights, whose precise execution of their game plan put them ahead early. And while every game, 40 minutes or more, has ebbs and flows, Rutgers' pressure and commitment to playing both ends of the floor helped them keep the lead throughout the half and allow their stars to shine. Steal for Rutgers, this is their calling card. K.K. Sanders connects on the other end. Eight on the shot clock, Cryer hands off, Wallace inside puts it in. Fantastic patience and poise by Rutgers on that offensive possession. Wraparound pass, Wallace with the finish. And get to Kia Mack all the credit, the freshman from Chicago with the assist. Beautiful pass. Rutgers with 22 points in the game right now, and their lead's back to eight. While Rutgers controlled the tempo of the game, there were still a few cracks in the Scarlet Knights' armor, and their double-digit lead slipped to six at the half. Minnesota is a good three-point shooting team, and their high-powered offense has the ability to erase any deficit. Coach Stringer would not be tasked with refocusing her team, but with guiding them to repeat their effort of the first half, understanding that trading baskets could have dire consequences. Comes to the spot and drills the three. Just gonna pitch strong take, lays it in, and it's a two-point game here in the fourth quarter. And for Rutgers, they're not just a, a scrappy team in terms of getting into the painted area. They can knock down some threes as well. Green will take the three, and she buries it. Yellow sets a screen. Three to shoot. Hubbard on the drive. Up off glass and good. And Minnesota has tied this game for the first time today. Knotted up at 56. One against three. Hits. Contact. Offensive foul. And K.K. Sanders got back there to draw the charge. The Scarlet Knights' lead may have evaporated, but their will and desire never wane. Time in the steal. It's Sanders. Attacks the rim and scores. K.K. Sanders with five steals here today. The fourth quarter turned into a shootout, and it was anyone's ball game at the rack. Wagner, three-pointer is good, and we are tied at 62. Both teams with answers at the offensive end. Ten to shoot for Skate. Skate attacks Wagner. Runner is good for Tyler Skate. 23 seconds. Hubbard looking Wagner's way. Double comes. Wagner against Harris. Out for Pitts off the deflection. The three is good in front of Minnesota's bench. And we're going to overtime in New Jersey. 
Well, when you have a game like this, it comes down to not only who wants it more, but who is the most focused, who is the most competitive, who is the most honed in on the little details, which we know are big details. Coach Stringer is no stranger when it comes to detail, and her squad responded in a big way by outscoring Minnesota 12 to 2 in the extra session. Harry in midair puts it in on the assist from Tyler Skate. Jenkins tapped it out, and Carey with the rebound. She has been a monster on the glass for the Scarlet Knights. Three to shoot. One, two, good for Tyler Scape. Ice screen from Jenkins. Scape splits it in, scores off the window. And when you love the game of basketball, you let it show. And at Rutgers, they love their basketball. The players, the fans, the students, the alumni. The Scarlet Knights repelled a stiff challenge for their 12th straight win at home as they write a new chapter in the Rutgers basketball story. the rack as Rutgers looks to continue to climb the national rankings. They'll face Nebraska and Michigan as coach C. Vivian Stringer closes in on her 1,000th career win. What got me interested in coaching is that I wanted to continue to be connected to the game, and there was nothing that I could do uh, other than to uh, to coach because they really didn't have uh, professional uh, women's basketball. And in order to stay close to the game, then I had to uh, wanted to, to continue to play, uh, but uh, short of that. It was coaching. It really helped me a lot to make the adjustment. You know, it's kind of interesting because I never really planned to be a coach. Uh, it was just that I, for whatever reason, just woke up. It was my senior year. Uh, so I, I had to make a decision. Am I going to go to graduate school uh, or, um, you know, start teaching or whatever? And I, um, my, my college coach, uh, Dr. Ann Griffith, and Dr. Uh, Pat Zimmerman uh, were two people that I, I really did admire uh, as a student at Slippery Rock uh, College. And um, I, I just saw the kind of influence that they could have on, on all of us as young women. And uh, I was appreciative of that, as well as my softball coach. I thought that everybody that was a coach was someone that, that endeared themselves to me and that I feel fortunate to be a part of, so. Um, and that last day came and I couldn't believe it. Oh my goodness, all this time and I, I didn't realize that that's it. You're no longer gonna play. And um, that's when I got a graduate assistantship at Slippery Rock, had an opportunity to coach and was so excited. I couldn't go to sleep at night just thinking about the X's and O's and the little things that, that I could do to uh, help, hopefully help make our team a little better that when that last day is played, it's over. But you can still be a part of it. As Rutgers fans filed into the rack, it was impossible not to feel the buzz. So far this season, the Scarlet Knights have beaten Wisconsin, a top 15 team in Seton Hall, while also taking the fourth ranked team in the nation, Michigan State to overtime on the Spartans home court. And now for this program on the rise, the next step is to turn these signature games into a consistent product on the court. And we are underway at the rack and Rutgers 
in control of the opening tip. Sanders on the drive, got to the rim, and when he gets that close, it's usually money for Corey Sanders. What do you like about this freshman, Baker? Uh, the fact that <laughs> he shows why he leads the team in assists, but I also like his demeanor. We appreciate Geo Baker making some plays while we talk about him as Rutgers jumps out to the 6-2 lead. Steve Peichel, the head coach of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights in his second year, and one thing we've learned about him early on in his career as he signed that extension a week or so ago, this is a team that right now is going to play very, cool. very hard on both ends of the floor. They are going to make you earn everything. Michigan State got a taste of that. Rutgers shot out to a quick 11-4 lead. And while Iowa briefly crept into the game, a 12-0 burst by the Scarlet Knights allowed the team to take command with three shots. Pass ahead to Sean Freeman on the run. Oh, the windmill for Freeman. Nice pass. Chom for three. Got it. Nice job by Baker of utilizing the pass fake and froze the defender. Coach Pico in his pregame interview said they were going to have to go deep in the bench, and he has certainly made good on that promise early. Ahead to Baker, stumbling. Baker to the rim for a two-handed stop. 12-0 run for Rutgers, opening up a 23-13 lead three at the top of the key is good, and Issa Chom, three for four. Good look inside to Freeman for the two-handed stop. Off by Omarui, and he'll put it back up and in. Chom will try again. Chom will hit again. Issa Chom. Baker will launch, and Baker hits from deep. Rutgers is 6 of 8 from behind the arc, and they lead by 17. Rutgers has put it all together in this half, offense and defense, and see what happens when you do offense and defense. Good things happen for your team up 14 at home. Few could have predicted that with Mike Williams on the bench, Rutgers would own a 14-point lead at the half, but they did. Coach Peichel played 11 different players against the Hawkeyes, and as each player joined the flow, the pressure never let up. How about, again, the unselfish play by Sanders? Even though he hasn't shot the ball real well, he's been very, very solid in terms of taking care of the basketball, very active with the hands. Good, that was a scouting report steal. And Rutgers all over the Hawks. Bullock steps in for a two, and he hits! First game! That's how you know it's your night. Rutgers extended their lead to as many as 23 points in the second half. And though Iowa continued to hang around, any question that they might make this a ball game was quickly answered. Matt Bullock, the lob underneath, Omaruye with the two-hand stuff. Sanders, the step back from the elbow. Oh, Corey Sanders. How often have we seen that in his career as he has 12? 15-point lead. The Rutgers lead turned out to be insurmountable for the Hawkeyes, with four Scarlet Knights scoring 14 or more points. Sanders on the drive. Oh, oh, the and the hammer thrown down by Corey Sanders. Corey Sanders provides the highlight of the night with a one-handed power jam. Giant win for the Scarlet Knights who trailed for just under 90 seconds total in this game. And they win at 80 to 64 over the Iowa Hawkeyes. Toughness, effort, unselfish play, preparation, and readiness when your number is called. All aspects of the foundation, Coach Steve Peichel continues to build on the banks. Sanders on the drive. Oh! And now the fans and other proud members of the Rutgers family are smiling as the rest of the college basketball world starts to take notice. This feels like a program now. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. it feels like they've got purpose on each possession. They have an idea of what they're going to do, what they're going to run. And you can just literally before our before our eyes, we can see this yeah. thing evolving into a program. Look, I'm very excited about Rutgers tonight. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's
Rutgers fans, the Big Ten season is just getting underway. Join us as Nebraska and Purdue visit the rack. The Rutgers basketball story is brought to you by RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey's largest hospital system. Let's be healthy together. And Coca-Cola, taste the feeling. This segment of the show is sponsored by RWJ Barnabas Health. Hi, I'm Dr. Yvette Rooks, Chief Medical Officer for Robert Wright Johnson Barnabas Health Sports Medicine. Stress is a part of life, but it's how we manage our life will make us successful. So take the time to take a deep breath, to smile, to meditate, to exercise, and to eat healthy. Those will all help reduce your stress. I'm KK Sanders. I'm a junior. I'm from Kankakee, Illinois. Sanders with high to shoot, off the bounce, knocks it down using the screen. Basketball was introduced to me at a young age, around maybe, mm, about four or five years old. I always played with my older cousins and, you know, uh, my uncle. <laughs> around fourth grade was the first time I decided to play for a team, but um, there wasn't a girls team at my school that I was attending, so I tried out for the boys team and I made it, but I played on the B team which was the team that just got like 60 minutes at the end of the A game just to get some playing time and feel good. So yeah, I was pretty bad. I'll tell you what, KK Sanders, she's got nine assists and she has affected play so many times. I live life on the upside. Come see me, I'll show you the upside. Oh, High school came and I, that's when I figured out that, okay, this is what I want to do at the next level. Um, I kind of got serious with it then. I started to, you know, really work on my game and just, you know, still have fun with it, but it was just a more serious moment. And um, I started to like it just more and more, and then I, I found a love for it, you know, coming on my visits and stuff. And when I got here, it was just, it felt home to me, you know. Um, I had came here twice before that on unofficial visits just to see the girls play and everything. And it was so exciting to be in the rack. You know, they had a pretty, it was a pretty packed game. Uh, Fan-wise, the crowd was great, that game that I attended. And I was just like, this is something I want to be a part of. And here now. 